introduce you to Robert Whitman. Thank you. That was the best introduction I ever had. <laughs> Usually it takes like 10 minutes and I talk about this and that the other day. Hey, let me introduce you to Robert Whitman. Thanks for being here. It's good to see everybody. Uh, I usually don't know what to say to these things because um, I don't have a PowerPoint or anything to show you. Uh, how many people have read the book? A couple? Okay. How many people are going to read the book? Excellent. Good. And you're all, you're all you're, I guess you're all art lovers? Mm -hmm. Is that what it is? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Good? Good. Right, how about collectors? Any collectors here? I wish. Yeah? Just to be with the collectors. I collect sketches. You collect sketches? Mm -hmm. So we have some collectors? Good. Well, I hope you have good security for your collections because it's really important to have that. You know, security is, people think that it costs money to have security. And the truth is it costs money when you don't have security. Because without that, then you lose your collection. You can have, you know, burglaries occur to your house. You can have all kinds of things happen. You know, it's a bad thing. So what you want to do is make sure you have the proper security, the proper security systems, and make sure that your collections are, are uh, you know, protected uh, from, from these people who are interested in stealing this stuff. Now, you know, I've, I've been, I've just to give you some background, if you do, I, I was an FBI agent for 20 years. I worked in the uh, Philadelphia office, and throughout my career in the Philadelphia office, I was uh, lucky enough to be able to work in 22 different countries, uh, protecting, trying to recover stolen artwork, recovering artwork. Uh, by the time I got done, we had recovered about $300 million worth of uh, stolen art and artifacts. Uh, and we had started the uh, FBI art crime team back in 2005. And for those of you who don't know what the art crime team was or is, it's a, it's a group of agents who have been trained specifically in how to do art theft investigations and how to recover this kind of cultural property. Because, you, know, uh, you know, a Monet is not the same as a Chevrolet. You know, it's a little bit different. You know? and, and when you do these types of investigations, you have to really know what you're looking for, who could be, on, who, who could be the person who's going to be involved in stealing it, and how to protect it. You know, it's a different situation than stealing, say, a car. Uh, it was always my goal when I got involved in these cases was to get the material back. I thought that was more important actually than actually catching the people who stole it. Because many times we don't, we don't recover these pieces for 20 years. Uh, I remember one case in 2001 where we recovered three uh, Norman Rockwell paintings that had been stolen from Minneapolis. It had been missing since the late 1970s. And we actually found them in uh, Brazil, in uh, Rio de Janeiro. So we went down and we were able to recover those pieces. One of them, I and mean, I talk about it in the book, was a, uh, a painting by Norman Rockwell that was done in 1976 for the cover of Boy's Life magazine, you know, the Boy Scout magazine. And it was the one where uh, you had the three Boy Scouts marching with the uh, fife and drum, you know, after the famous painting from the uh, Revolutionary War days, you know, the, uh, the painting. Anyway, this particular piece uh, actually had uh, the, the uh, World Trade Center buildings in the background because it was an innocent New Jersey Boy Scout troop. So we recovered that in December of 2001, almost uh, about 30, about 90 days after the 9-11 attacks. So it just goes to show, you know, this artwork is very important for our culture and our heritage. Uh, you know, we, we uh, as, a, as a nation, we get blamed a lot. We get, we get, you know, told that we don't really care about artwork. But the truth is we do. You know, Americans are the largest consumer group in the world when it comes to art. You know, we make up 40% of the art market in the world every year. $80 billion, all right, is spent in the United States on art. The whole market is $200 billion. The United States 40% or $80 billion. So we do love art. We do care about it. Uh, just to give you some statistics that are out of the book itself, you know, uh, when we talk about artwork and Americans, more Americans go to the Smithsonian Museums every year than go to all the NFL games, for all the Major League Baseball games combined. All right, 24.1 million uh, attendees went to the Smithsonian mu uh, Museums. You know, when we look at the money, uh, $80 billion in the United States, if you take the NFL and Major League Baseball and put them together, it's about $15 billion a year. So artwork is six times or five times larger than Major League Baseball and the NFL. Now, this is a football town, <laughs> okay? You know, we all love our Eagles. But we love our Philadelphia Museum of Art even more, don't we? Because of that. And this shows that the, uh, the art is really appreciated in the United States. So these are big numbers, big stats. And the reason there's so much fraud and, and theft and whatnot in the art market is because there is no regulatory agencies 
there is nobody out there protecting the public when it comes to art crime. You know, if you're going to buy real estate, you know, you're going to have to have title insurance. There's a real estate commission, all that stuff. Same thing with stocks and bonds. You, know, you have the SEC you have all that going. In the art market, there's nothing. And it always surprises me. You know, people will go out and buy a piece of artwork, and they'll spend hundreds of thousands of millions, millions of dollars. And there's no, there's no title insurance. There's no, there's nothing. There's no contracts that are done. You know, if you buy a house and you spend two hundred fifty thousand dollars, you're going to have title insurance and all that. You're going to, it's, it's mandatory. You have to have it. But you can buy an artwork worth the same amount of money and have nothing. So why is it? You know, why is it we don't look at our investments the same way? Real estate, art, it's, a, it's when it comes to being a business, it's the same thing. And the other thing we have to think about, and we don't think about often, is that, you know, when you talk about art and art history, you, see, you talk about Monet and, and being blind, you know, and, and, and painting, and, and, the, and, the, and the wonderful history of Renoir. At the end of his career, his life, he had to actually use a brush and tie them to his wrist because he had such bad arthritis. Uh, you know, Van Gogh, everybody knows he cuts off his ear. You know, these are the historical art stories that we hear about. And we love art history because it's very romantic, you know. But there's a whole separate side to the art market, and it's the business side. And when we talk about art crime, it's all about art business. You know, one of the things I talk about in the book as well is that Rembrandt, you know, he did a hundred self-portraits in his career. A hundred, they call them tronies. Tronies are little self-portraits of the face and the head of an artist. And he did over a hundred, and he, and he gave them away. Now, why do you think he did that? Anybody have any idea? It's what? Advertising. There you go. Excellent. It's advertising. And you know why he did his self-portraits? It's not because he loved himself. He didn't have to pay a model. It was cheaper. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it, it was cheaper to, to do self-portraits because he didn't have to pay anybody. So even Rembrandt, when we talk about you know Monet, Rembrandt, you know these, these fantastic, these well-known artists, even Rembrandt was a businessman. He was giving away his self-portraits so that families in Amsterdam would look at them and say, you know what, this is great. Uh, I, I need a self-portrait done on my family. This is the guy I'm going to call. And he didn't have to pay anybody to, to sit for his portraits because he was doing himself. So he did himself in every different type of uh, expression that you could think of. And that's why. Because then he could show that he could do any expression and it was free and he made good business out of it. So even Rembrandt was all about business, okay? And that's what the art market is. It's about business. Questions? Questions about art theft? Do we have some questions? Now there's lots of stories and whatnot. Uh, I don't have a PowerPoint here. And the problem is, I don't want to tell you stories about art thefts without pictures of art. You know, it's hard to, it's hard to do that. But I'll be happy to answer.